Well, the second trial of Robert Newlander is focusing on crime scene experts tonight. Newlander, of course, the former doctor accused of killing his wife, Leslie. Good evening. I'm Matt Mulcahy. And I'm Megan Coleman. Today's testimony was heavily focused on details of the crime scene, going over that blood splatter analysis that's been critical to the prosecution's case. This morning, Robert Newlander arrived in court with his family beside him, his daughter Jenna, who made the 911 call to police nearly a decade ago, and his son Ari showing their support. We expect to hear testimony from Jenna later on in the trial. On the witness stand today, the blood pattern expert who discovered a bombshell piece of evidence in the second trial and is providing insight into what the blood at the crime scene tells us about what killed or who killed Leslie Newlander. Our Mary Keeler is live now at the old Onondaga County Courthouse. Mary, what'd you learn today? Well, Matt, it was another long day of testimony that just wrapped up minutes ago before we came on the air and on the stand the entire day today. Kenneth Martin, he's a key witness here because he's the one, the DNA expert that says he found a piece of Leslie Newlander's head, a piece of her tissue on the couple's headboard. This important because it's a new piece of evidence that was only discovered about a year ago and it's something that wasn't brought up in the 2015 first murder trial. Kenneth Martin spent more than 30 years as a detective lieutenant at a Massachusetts the state police department there. He ran the forensic crime lab and is now a forensic consultant brought on by the Onondaga County DA's office. Martin spent hours today on the stand describing different types of blood stains to the jury. There was a lot to cover and ultimately Martin testified that after analyzing the blood evidence, he does not believe Leslie Newlander slipped and fell in their shower. He went through a slideshow of hundreds of blood spatters on different pieces of furniture in the Newlander's bedroom and including the blinds, the nightstand, and even water bottles. Questioning by the prosecution went on for about five hours today. Then the defense, led by lawyer Jonathan Bach, got to start, which was more of the same questioning, very detailed questioning. But just before the defense wrapped up their cross-examination this afternoon, they asked Ken Martin to, uh, to confirm if he thinks that the head injury that Leslie Newlander got, uh, that that could have ultimately caused her death happened in the bedroom. He says that is consistent with what he believes. This is the first day that we've seen just one expert witnessed on the stand for hours. So you can imagine the jury had a lot of information to take in today. But of course, a big witness here as Kenneth Martin was not testifying in the first trial in 2015, especially with that new bombshell evidence. Destiny USA has been declared a trouble spot by so many shoppers who say they won't go there anymore because of what's happening. CBS 5's Samantha Croston is with the Live Eye with new details tonight. Well, the expert who I spoke with says that the best chance that Destiny USA has at being safe again is if multiple parties work together on this issue. That includes local leaders, the Syracuse Police Department, and mall management. What will it take to stop crime at Destiny USA? Keith Taylor, a criminal justice professor who has worked in different sectors of policing, thinks one factor to keep an eye on is the way the problems caused by the pandemic affect people's attitudes and behaviors. Loss of jobs, and young people not going to school, um, you know, just a host of, of uh, complex things that have occurred as a result. Another threat access to illegal guns. That is a clear and present danger. Having unregulated handguns being able to be used by anybody who can afford them is, is, uh, is clearly, you know, very dangerous. It's a complex issue that has many different causes at play, which is why Taylor says the best chance of solving it is for local leaders, SPD, mall management, even schools and community outreach groups to work together towards the same goal. Helping to identify individuals who may need additional resources, additional help, um, who may be, frankly, going down to a life of or path of crime and, and, and intercede. It's a method that is already being used in other places across the country, including New York City, Memphis, Maryland, and Marin City, California. Partnerships are being made between different groups to address youth crime within communities. What you don't want is for, uh, you know, all these different stakeholders to say, this is not my job, and turn, you know, look the other way. 
and allow this problem to get much worse. There is supposed to be a meeting later this week that will be with mall management, the Syracuse Police Department, and the mayor's office to discuss potential solutions. So far, we have been reaching out to mall management. We are still awaiting a response for an on-camera interview. we are responsible for that area of the city, asking them what needs to happen to make sure shoppers are safe. Our Maggie DeRoches is live just outside Destiny tonight with more. Maggie? Right now, all eyes are on Destiny Mall owners Pyramid Management Group to see if they're willing to invest in security to prevent crimes like the recent shootings plaguing the mall. Two shootings in three weeks. Two armed robberies in a week. Julie Beheim was the victim of one of them. Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh says they are willing to do what they can to help fight crime at the mall. But at the end of the day, the property owners need to secure their private property. My desire to see the owners do more to make sure that that building is safe. And again, offered our assistance in doing that. We have Syracuse police officers there every day. Um, but clearly more needs to be done. And again, it starts with the owner. Increased security is one of a number of suggestions the city will bring to mall owners to help combat crime. We'll probably like ask them to maybe up the, up the ante a little bit as far as police officers go. If Destiny ownership isn't proactive in solving the mall's issues, we asked Mayor Walsh if it's possible the city would consider the mall a nuisance property, like they did with Skyline Apartments. We do have certain tools at our disposal, whether it's nuisance abatement or otherwise, um, that we will consider. Uh, I've asked our team to uh, look at, uh, to take a, a, a snapshot of the mall to look at how many crimes we have, how many qualifying arrests we have that could contribute towards a, a nuisance abatement case. Um, but largely those are used, those, those tools are used when you have a property owner that isn't uh, willing to come to the table. Since the mall is a major tax revenue source, Syracuse Common Councilor Pat Hogan says it's in the city's interest to see Destiny USA succeed. A huge sales tax revenue source, a absolutely. And we want to make sure everybody uh, has a good time in any kind of city facility or within the borders of the city. So, uh, you know, this is very concerning to us. Syracuse Common Councilor Pat Hogan said he doesn't categorize Destiny USA as a problem property. He says the property's been around for a long time. People go there daily and incidents like we've seen will happen. He says our community, like so many others, needs to figure out how to deal with increasing crime.